So in this video, we're just going to have a brief overview of all the different types of functions that we're going to come across in the Leaving Cert. Um, so like I said, functions rarely comes up as its own question, so I'm just going to briefly go into them here, because each of these functions you will see in a different part of the course, and you'll look at them more closely there. So as long as you can just recognize them from this video, and then look at them from kind of a functions perspective, then that's all you really need. So I'll just start with the basic one, linear, which is probably the first one you would have ever seen, um, and you probably got that from coordinate geometry. So linear one is going to be a line, basically, and the function is going to be something like f of x uh, is equal to y, so f of x or y, just writing it like that, is equal to ax plus b, where a and b are numbers. Yeah, so you've all seen lines, they're straight, and um, that's all really I can say about linear functions, so they're just basically straight lines, okay? Uh, next, I'm going to talk about quadratic functions, so you would have seen these quite a lot as well. So quadratic so these are going to be in the shape of either a U or else a little green. They're going to be in the shape of an N. And they're going to be in the form f of x is equal to y. Again, that just means that it can you can say f of x or y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, a, b, and c are numbers. Uh, and just the, you should know that if a is a minus number, so if the number before x squared is minus, then you're going to have an n. Yeah, so that's the difference between a u and an n is that the number before the x squared is minus. So that's basically like a unique, you're going to learn loads more about quadratics when you look at the algebra videos. So uh, for quadratics, look at algebra. For linear, you're going to look at, so for linear functions, coordinate geometry will kind of tell you all you need to know about them. Then we're going to look at cubic functions. And again, cubic functions, you would have seen in algebra. So cubic, and again, these are going to look either like that or else doing the same diagram, they're going to look like that. So the slight difference is this goes up, down, up. That goes down, up, down. And again, the difference, so I'll just go, actually, I'll do it all in orange. So f of x is equal to, it's going to be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And any of these numbers can be missing. Well, the, the x cubed has to be there, but the rest of them don't necessarily have to be there for it to be cubic. Because the highest power is x to the power 3. That makes it a cubic function. So, uh, again, I'll just say a, b, c, d are numbers. And then if a is minus, you get the one on the right here. So it goes down, up, down. And if a is plus, and you get this one. So you don't have to be super worried about that, but uh, just know that there is a difference that if a is minus or plus, it swaps the direction. So similar to the quadratic one, uh, it's still a little bit harder to remember which direction it goes in. But uh, anyway, as long as you know that, then that's important, and you know the general shape of a cubic function graph. Also, one thing that's important about these, so they're cubic, because the highest power is to the power of 3. This also means, so I'll actually do this in blue, this means they have three roots, or it hits the x-axis three times, and three factors. And this will be important in the next one as well. So three roots and three factors. Uh, I'm going to have to scroll across for the next one. So let me go up, and then I will go across. So we're going to look at things called polynomials now. So I'm just going to call it a polynomial. And that means, so f of x. I'm going to say f of x is equal to ax to the power of 4, I'm going to go dot, 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 okay? And it can be, I'll say, 4 or higher. So generally, uh, we call linear quadratic cubic, so that's just x, then x squared, and then x to the power of 3 is cubic. After that, we just call them polynomials, so they can be to any power. Uh, and they're, they're kind of similar as graphs, they're just kind of squiggly things. Anything to the power of 4, so similar to the last one, so 4 roots so it hits the x-axis four times so one two three four and four factors and that's for to the power of four if you have to the power of five there's going to be five turns five roots five factors etc 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 so that's all i'm going to talk about polynomials they don't come up super often but just know they're going to be weird squiggly things and um, is the most important i think now we're going to look at trigonometric ones so i'm just going to say trig so trigonometric equations we're going to have three different ones so uh, our trigonometric functions are either going to be a sine function. So it's going to be something like that. And that keeps going on forever and ever. So it looks kind of like a cubic, but it stays the same, keeps going. So 
that's sine of x. Then you're also going to have cos of x. Again, these are really rough graphs. So that's cos of x. And then the last one is tan of x, which is a little bit weird. Again, just scribbles. So tan of x. So they're a little bit different than the other functions. And we have a few whole videos on those in our uh, trigonometry playlist. We'd recommend looking at those to get a better insight, but just to know briefly, if you see one of them, that you know it's a trigonometric function. Uh, uh, yeah. And then uh, the next topic we're gonna look at then is exponential. So exponential functions. So they're gonna be in the form y is equal to e to the x, okay? So it can be any number in the bottom, but generally it's e. So e is a special exponential number. Um, you don't need to know why it's so special, you just need to know that it is special, really. Uh, and e to the x looks like this. Like that there, okay? So that is the line e to the x. Uh, so you might hear people say that's growing exponentially. That means it's growing really fast, and that's because this graph here, it goes gets really high really, really fast, okay? So the further you go across, it gets really, really high really quickly. Um, also, just they did ask one year about the negative exponential graph, so they asked for y is equal to e to the minus x, and you just need to know that that's basically the backwards e to the x graph, okay? So that's e to the minus x there. Um, other things you need to know is that it always crosses the, the y-axis here at one, okay? Um, that's about it, and also, <clears throat> that it never touches the x-axis here. So it gets infinitely close, but never touches it. So it's a few different things you need to know about the exponential. <coughs> Excuse me. A few different things you need to know about the exponential function. Uh, we're going to look at how to graph it in another video, so that should be okay. And then I'm just going to pause the video, erase this, and we're going to look at the logarithmic function last. Okay, so we're back. We're going to look at logarithmic function. I'll just go that for short, uh, or just a log function. So logs are a little bit different. We're gonna make videos on logs as well, so you can be comfortable with those. I'll do this in yellow. Uh, a log graph is going to look like that, okay? And a log basically looks like this, log base 10 of x. So watch the videos on logs if you're not uh, comfortable with those, but that's basically what a log graph looks like. Uh, it doesn't matter really, because if you do need to, you can basically figure it out, you can learn to graph any functions. We're going to go through that in another video. Um, but just that it, it does really help if you know generally what all these functions look like. It'll just save you a bit of time. Uh, and also one thing about the log function, it always cuts the x-axis at 1 there as well. Okay, So that's a brief overview of pretty much every function we're going to see in the Leaving Cert course. And hopefully in the Leaving Cert exam, yeah, they won't ask you about all of them, but they could ask you about any of those. So hope you enjoyed the video. This is, again, just a brief overview. Look at each one individually if you want to learn more about it. Uh, when seeing the next video, we're going to talk about graphing functions. So how to graph any of these functions, uh, we can learn how to do that in the next video.